Throne and Liberty is a new upcoming MMORPG developed by NCSoft for PC, PlayStation 5 and Xbox, with release officially confirmed for quarter 4 of 2022. Recently we have got a latest new play novel, actually we have got a last part of play novel, episode 5, in which final battle rages between forces of good and evil. Stay with me for the next few minutes to find out who wins the battle and since this is the last part of play novel, what is next regarding throne and liberty, maybe some exciting announcement incoming soon. Before we start, let me just say subscribe to my YouTube channel to see more Throne and Liberty videos in the future. First, let's check what happened in Play Novel. In Chapter 9 of Play Novel, named the Battle of Belfred, we can see the final battle between dark magic sorceress Calantia and the knight Rowan Aaron after Resistance members have managed to infiltrate Belfred Castle, currently main base of villains of Throne and Liberty storyline. It was not easy to enter castle, but since this was in the past home of Rowan Aaron, she knows her way around the castle, so she manages to find a way to Kalantia, who is recovering from mana drained out of her body. In this weakened state, Kalantia is not that strong, and in the final moments of the fight between her and Rowan, Jared Burnell, Drake Hunter and one of the leaders of Resistance members have managed to cut off Kalantia's left arm. On her left arm, Kalantia have a mark of Curse of Silaves, same as Rowan, and that is the secret and magical connection between these two girls since they were just little children until this moment. Curse of Silaves was split on two parts, one part of Curse is on Rowan and other part on Kalantia, and don't forget that Kalantia have killed Lord Mark Aaron, Rowan's father. Before that, soldiers of Lord Mark Aaron have killed Kalantia's parents, so yes, I could say that situation regarding connection of Kalantia and Rowan is pretty complicated. Check some previous videos on my YouTube channel to clearly understand who is who in storyline. I have already made a few videos regarding villains and heroes of Throne and Liberty where you can see clearly details regarding each one of these characters. Luckily for Kalantia, Solar Tuman, Wraith and one of the Legion commanders of Revelupius manages to save Kalantia at the last moment and to bring her back to Revelupius, but it's already too late for Kalantia since without her left arm and left wing tattoo of Silaves on that arm, she can't survive and she is about to die. While Resistance members are celebrating victory in Belfred Castle, Solar Tuman is using dark magic called Akidu magic to sacrifice Kalantia and to turn her into old artifact in the last moment before her death. In Chapter 10, last chapter of the play novel, we are following Wraith Teal and his helper Lunar O on search for Janice Carter, mother of wizard Clay Carter. During that time, Resistance members are trying to defend Belfort Castle from attacks of Revel Lupius' evil forces. For the first time, we can see Chaos Golems in the siege, and I assume that we could see a few of those already in official trailer for Throne and Liberty. Of course, as this game is one real MMORPG, we can expect to see sieges as one of the main in-game features of Throne and Liberty. I have to admit the description of this siege within play novel is really interesting because we can see participating in the siege many creatures like flying drakes, huge chaos golems, berserker orcs and archaeum legion wizards, so I have to wonder which options we'll have available for real in-game siege. It's possible that some of these creatures in different form will be able to use or control during Siege since we know already from before that animal transformations will be available as one of the in-game features. In the final moment of Siege battle, Wraith Thiel, Lunar O and Wizard Jane Carter are coming to help to defend the castle with rain of ice arrows falling down from the skies. Wraith Teal sacrifices himself to defeat Solar Tuman, and they both die. And finally, Revel Lupius was hit by arrow in heart, but Drake fly in rescue and manage to carry his body away. A year later, everything is peaceful and getting back to normal. Row and Aaron have become a queen, and evil forces are defeated. But body of main villain Revel Lupius was never discovered, and also faith of Jared Burnell is unknown since Drake, who flew away with his body, vanished without any trace. Also, mysterious man awakens after a long time, asking to talk with Wraith Kazar Simonson. So many questions remain open. 
That was the last part of play novel and since we are approaching to quarter 4 of 2022, it's a logical thing to ask, what's next? Since NCSoft have decided to release Throne and Liberty during this year, we can look forward to hear some concrete information regarding many in-game features, business model and maybe some testing phase very soon, but for now everything is silent. As you can see here on official website of Throne and Liberty, you will not find any kind of new information. Also here on official website of NCSoft, on this part of the website where you can see media center and news, you will not find anything related to Throne and Liberty. Also, I am following everything what is happening on Japanese Twitter account of Throne and Liberty and actually here something is happening. Last the previous tweet only two hours ago, so all the time they are tweeting here something regarding Throne and Liberty, but nothing special. You can see here a latest a new play novel, last part of the play novel and that's it. Right now when I'm making this video, it's start of August and I assume that somewhere by the end of this month we will finally get some information regarding business model of this game and also date regarding some kind of testing phase. I mean at least that, because quarter 4 is approaching, so Fancy Soft don't have too much time to waste, they need to move forward with marketing and advertising campaign and also they need to give us some kind of information regarding in-game features, business model and of course regarding some kind of testing phase. End of August would be a perfect time frame to announce some kind of testing phase. So all we can do now on the start of August is to hope for the best and let's hope that soon we will hear some good news from NCSoft. I am following all the official sources of information regarding Throne and Liberty and whenever I see anything interesting is happening with this game, I will let you know about that instantly here on my YouTube channel. Let me know in the comments below video how do you like Throne and Liberty from information you have so far about it and will you try to play it after release. If you are interested into MMORPGs, check my YouTube channel for lots of gameplay videos, guides, news and reviews from world of MMORPG gaming with main focus on new upcoming PC MMORPGs. Currently I am playing some other new MMORPG titles, but of course in quarter 4 of 2022 this game here, Throne and Liberty, will be main focus of my YouTube channel. Thank you for watching the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel to see more MMORPG videos and of course Throne and Liberty videos in the future. See you soon with another new Throne and Liberty video because I assume we will not wait for a long time to hear some good news from NCSoft. I assume that will happen during August, maybe that summer showcase or at least some kind of release date for some kind of testing phase. That would be something really great, so expect some good news very soon.